Welcome back to Pastor to Pastor. People are always asking me about what kind of resources I could recommend. And I wanted to share with you today some of my favorite biblical scholars. People who have written commentaries on Old Testament books or New Testament books. Or who have written in the field of hermeneutics and interpretation and in biblical studies. This is not meant to be a discussion of systematic theologians. We're going to have another video in the future where we talk about those. But today I just wanted to talk about the people that I go to often as I'm preparing a sermon. People whose commentaries I really value and admire. And the first commentator I want to mention, he passed away just a few years ago. He had asthma for a long time and battled that. And I think he lived to be about 73 years old. His name is Grant Osborne. He taught New Testament for many years at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. I was privileged to take a couple of courses with him in the Doctor of Ministry program. And these are a bunch of his commentaries and books that I have on Logos Bible Software. And probably my favorite commentary by him is his commentary on the Gospel of Matthew in the Zondervan Exegetical New Testament series. Fabulous commentary. The introduction could be a little bit longer, but the verse-by-verse -verse notes and the application are phenomenal. One of the most reliable commentaries on Matthew that I have. And I love his expositional series. He came out with an 11-volume series of expositions on Bible books not too long before he died. I don't know if he sensed that he was not long for this world, that he was getting ready to meet God in the next world, but he came out with a lot of helpful expositions, and I love his commentary on Romans. He's actually got two commentaries on Romans. He's got one in the InterVarsity Press New Testament commentary series. It's a hardback, and he's got one in this um, paperback um, Grant Osborne New Testament commentary series, and both are excellent. His commentary on Luke in the series is great. I've used that. His commentary on James is great. It's almost up there with Douglas Moo on James. It's, that's how good it is. I love his commentary on Acts. And, of course, he's well known for writing the book The Hermeneutical Spiral, which is a great book on biblical interpretation. So, Grant Osborne, I think he leans Arminian in his dogmatic theology. But as far as interpreting the books of the New Testament verse by verse, I find him to be solid. I find him to be very reliable. Okay, one of another one of my favorite biblical commentators, I'm going to bring him up on Logos, is D.A. Carson. I think he's semi-retired now. You don't hear as much about him these days. I think he really, maybe he's taking care of his family. Maybe God has called him to other things. But I found his writings to be phenomenal. In 1984, in the Expositor Bible Commentary series, he came out with his commentary on Matthew. And up to that time, that was considered one of the top evangelical New Testament commentaries on the market. It was so helpful. It, it interacted not only with the text verse by verse, but with other scholars and what they were saying about the text. And D.A. Carson has a reputation for being one of the most well-read New Testament scholars. At one point in his life, he was reading 500 books a year. Now, it's debatable if he read every one of those books word for word every year, but he went through 500 books a year, and he knew what was going on in the field of biblical studies, and he was so smart. He's a, he's a mathematician as well, and he's fluent in systematic theology and in cultural studies. He is just one of those scholars that can get into all sorts of fields that are offshoots of biblical studies. But his commentary on Matthew is phenomenal. His commentary on the Gospel of John is a standard. It's starting to get a little long in the tooth. I mean, it's been out over 30 years. But I still consult it because it's a great verse-by-verse -verse exposition. It doesn't interact with other scholars quite as regularly as the one on Matthew does. But 
It's still a phenomenal commentary. And I love some of his expositions. I loved his book, The God Who Is There, where he takes 14 different sections of scripture and shows us what that reveals to us about God. That is a great little book. You can probably read it in a couple of days. I think they're basically 14 sermons put under one cover. And also on Logos Bible Software, well, I have a hundred and, well, I don't know if I have that many. It says 186 resources with the name Carson, but there might be another Carson in there other than D.A. Carson. Let me put, let's see if I can put Don Carson in there. Okay, well, that doesn't give me near enough. But I have his Enduring, in the, the Enduring Authority of the Christian Scriptures. He was the editor of that volume. That was a 1,300-page book. It took me forever to read that. But his opening article on the history of understanding the authority of the Bible was phenomenal. I mean, the whole book was phenomenal. Great contributions by great writers. But I think Carson's articles were my favorite. They were just so good. He has a great book called Christ and Culture Revisited. I'm going to try to get my wife to read that. She's interested in that topic. And I love his the, the study Bible that he edited, the NIV Biblical Theology Study Bible, I read the notes in there all the time. I think other than the ESV Study Bible, I put it right up there with, as one of the, the top tier study Bibles. There's about five or six study Bibles that I've listed as top tier, and the one edited by D.A. Carson is definitely one of them. I, I use it all the time. I love it. Um, I also loved his book about his devotion for the love of God. I've got that. And I love his sermons. You can go on YouTube, and there's a lot of D.A. Carson sermons. Also on Logos Bible Software, I have a collection of his sermons. He's a reliable, strong, biblical interpreter. I love D.A. Carson. And both D.A. Carson and Grant Osborne taught for many years at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. Let's see, who else do I have here? Daryl Bach. He's a professor of New Testament and Cultural Studies at Dallas Theological Seminary. He has a podcast where he interacts with cultural issues. But where Daryl Bach really cut his teeth was in his Bible commentaries. He has a two-volume set. Let's see if I can bring it up here. On the Gospel of Luke in the Baker Exegetical New Testament Commentary Series. They are phenomenal volumes. I, I have a lot of commentaries on Luke, but the ones by Bach are so good. I would say the, the older one by I.H. Marshall in the Greek New Testament Commentary Series and the two volumes by Bach and Baker are the ones that I find so reliable. And then for sermon prep, I like Osborne on Luke as well. But Daryl Bach. And also, he's got a great exegetical commentary on Acts in the same series as the Luke series. I got to tell you, Daryl Bach has written three different commentaries on Luke. He's got the two big volumes in the Baker exegetical set. He's got a single volume in the NIV application commentary set, which I don't like quite as much. And then there's one in the InterVarsity Press New Testament commentary series. So he's written tremendous amount of material on Luke and Acts. He also has another volume on the theology of Luke and Acts. So I've got 42 resources of Daryl Bach. His Jesus According to Scripture. That was a pretty good book. It was super reliable. He does a great job interpreting the gospel texts, but it was sort of like he was basically explaining what is more or less obvious to the reader of the gospel. So I, I, I felt like it could have gotten a little bit deeper, but what he said was good. Let's see. Theology of Luke and Acts is excellent. I read... Covenantal and Dispensational Theologies, Four Views, and Daryl Bach presents the Progressive Dispensational View. That was interesting. 
let's see. So Daryl, and he, of course, he wrote a textbook on progressive dispensationalism with Craig Blazing. But a book that I just read by Daryl Bach that really was a surprise to me was his book, Cultural Intelligence. It's a short book, about 125 pages. And it talks about how we can speak cult intelligently to the people in our culture about Christ, that we don't treat people as enemies of the gospel. We treat them as the goal of the gospel, as those whom God loved, as those whom God sent Jesus to die for. And it was a great reminder. It's a great little book, Cultural Intelligence. But Daryl Bach, one of my favorite New Testament scholars, and I think he's a Jewish believer in Christ like I am. So I think that's pretty cool too. Another commentator I really like is Ben Witherington. I took seven classes with him at Ashland Theological Seminary. I'm, I probably lean a little more Reformed than Dr. Witherington. Witherington is definitely an Arminian. But I'll tell you what, I learned so much in his classes and in his commentaries. His commentary on Acts is probably his best commentary. I've read, it's a big, <laughs> I won't tell you what he called it. But anyways, it's like this thick. And his commentary on Acts is so interesting. It almost reads like you're reading a story or a novel. And yet, it, I won't say it goes verse by verse. I think it does, but more like paragraph by paragraph. I don't know. But it, I learned so much in his commentary on Acts. And he defends the historicity of Luke in both Luke and in Acts. And I read that commentary twice, cover to cover. And I've used it other times as well. I just love it. I get so much out of it. I mean, if the only book you ever get by Dr. Witherington is the commentary on Acts, that's, you haven't done bad at all. Similarly, I love Ben Witherington's book, New Testament History. It's about 400 pages. Again, it reads like a story, like a novel. Witherington majored in English at the University of North Carolina, so he, he's a, he, you know, he's a excellent writer. He's well-read. He reads a lot of poetry, a lot of literature, and I think it colors the way he writes. That's why he writes so well. I like his commentary on Romans. I do prefer a more Reformed approach to the Book of Romans, but I, I enjoyed his commentary on Romans very much. But Acts is the best one. He's got his commentary on the Gospel of Mark is very good indeed. I'm preaching through the Gospel of Mark at church, and I'm going through Mark 13. That's a very difficult passage to interpret. And Witherington has been a reliable guide as I go through the Gospel of Mark. He's got an interesting contribution for the Gospel of Luke. He co-wrote a commentary with a Jewish scholar, Amy Jill Levine. And Witherington is, of course, much more open to the reliability of Luke Acts, I think, even than Amy Jill Levine. But that's a very interesting contribution. I've never seen a commentary quite like it, where you have an evangelical and a conservative Jewish scholar writing a commentary together. I've never seen anything like that. I also like Witherington's monographs. I loved his Christology of Jesus. That was the first book he wrote. No, well, it wasn't the first one. It was one of his first books, way back in 1990. And he goes through key passages in the gospel and demonstrates their historicity. And he said that Jesus really did believe that he was the Messiah and presented himself as the Messiah. Well, if you believe the Bible, that's no surprise, but the way he defends it is brilliant. So I highly recommend the Christology of Jesus. He's written a couple of controversial books as well that not everyone will agree with. He has one called um, Jesus, Paul, and the End of the World. That's getting hard to find. That book also is you know, over 30 years old at this point. But not everyone will agree with his eschatology. He is historic premillennial. So I think that's a very solid viewpoint of, of eschatology. And then he's got another one about evangelical theology. Let's see if I can find it. But that is the one that I think 
got them in a little bit of hot water with other scholars. Let's see if I own that in Logos. Maybe I have that. I might have that somewhere else. But he wrote one where he talks about Calvinism, Arminianism, Dispensationalism, and Wesley Arminianism. And he his thesis in that book is that each one of those dogmatic theologies are at their weakest at their most distinctive points. And so he basically rejects all of them, but he, he is Wesley Arminian, but he he even shows some flaws with that. And I think he got a lot of people's hair curled, <laughs> you know, when he wrote that book. I reviewed the book, and it's driving me crazy that I can't quite remember the name of it. My main criticism of the book is that he didn't interact with the scholars who hold those views. He interacted with the sparring partners that he usually talks about, I.H. Marshall, James D.G. Dunn, Cranfield, people like that. But if you're going to talk about dispensationalism and refute it, you need to interact with some dispensationalists, don't you think? If you're going to refute Calvinism, you need to interact with some Calvinists, right? If you're going to show out the errors of any view, you should go into their turf. And so that was, I thought, the major weakness of that book. He came out with a second edition of it. And I haven't had a chance to read the second edition to see if he corrected that. But that was, and also Dr. Witherington was somebody who defended the James Ossuary and said that that was legitimate. And then right after that, there was an alleged Jesus Ossuary, which was not legitimate, but believing the one and believing the other put him in an awkward position. I, as I recall, that was about, what, 15 years ago? But Having said that, Witherington has written, he also has a blog where he writes almost every day. He is probably the most voluminous writer of all the New Testament and old biblical scholars that I like. I don't think there's anybody alive today that writes as much as he does in the field of biblical studies. And he's also written fiction. He's got about seven or eight novels in the Dr. Arthur West Dr. Art West series of novels. And I think he's written a couple other novels besides. And they're quite good, I might add. I, I'm i thinking, well, how, you know, a guy who's a biblical studies guy, how is he going to write a novel? But man, you could tell he was a literature major. So I highly recommend his books, but I would also make sure that you're reading other scholars in conjunction with Witherington, that he's not the only scholar that you read. But boy, oh boy, have I, I've learned a lot from him. Let's see. I, who else do I have on my favorite scholar list? Eckhard Schnabel. He's a German New Testament scholar that came over to the United States and taught at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School for a while. Now I believe he's at Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary. And he has written only a handful of books, you know, especially compared to Witherington. He's only written a handful, but the books he has written are timeless classics. Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, his commentary on the book of Acts is one of the best commentary, best commentaries on the book of Acts that you can find. But I absolutely love his two volumes of early Christian mission. I mean, so these are some of the books that I have by Eckhard Schnabel. But those two volumes are probably about 1,800 pages total. But I love those books. They go deep into the historicity of the apostles. It talks about where the apostles went. And one of my favorite parts of volume one is the tremendous defense of Thomas and his ministry in India, the historicity of his conversations with Gondophorus. But Oh my goodness, those two books are so good. There's nothing quite like them. Early Christian Mission 
by Eckhard Schnabel. There's a smaller condensed version just focusing on Paul. And that one is called Paul the Missionary. And that one is good, but I would get the two volumes of Early Christian Mission. They are fabulous, great resources. I've also read most of, maybe I finished it, I think I did finish it, Jesus in Jerusalem, a commentary on Passion Week. So as we get closer to Easter, pick up Eckhard Schnabel's book, Jesus in Jerusalem, and read that. Very interesting. But by far, Early Christian Mission is his my favorite book by him. I like his commentary on Acts a lot. His book, 40 Questions About the End Times, that's quite good also. So Eckhard Schnabel, one of my favorites. Let's see, who else do I have here? Craig Keener. How could I forget about Craig Keener? He's another one who has written voluminously, rivaling Ben Witherington. I'd say N.T. Wright, Craig Keener, and Ben Witherington are three of the most voluminous writers in biblical studies. And Craig Keener, oh, let me pull up books on him. I had to spend quite a bit of money to get all his commentaries. They're not cheap. But boy, are they good. When I got, when I graduated with my Master of Divinity from Ashland Theological Seminary, one of my mentors got for me Craig Keener's InterVarsity Press Bible Background New Testament Commentary. And it goes verse by verse in through the New Testament, about 800 pages, and it just gives you cultural and social and background material that illuminate the text. And at that time, there wasn't anything else like it on the market. And I found it very helpful. It enabled me to put things in my sermons that maybe people had never heard before. I wouldn't use it to interpret the Bible per se. I think you need a more traditional expositional commentary for that. But I still consult it. I still find it very, very helpful. Well, I've got 28 resources in my Logos Bible software library of Craig Keener. And let me just share some of my favorites. His two-volume Gospel of John is phenomenal. I mean, there, there's hardly anything about the Gospel of John that Craig Keener has not thought about or written about. It is so rich, so relevant, so helpful. You know, I, it's hard to say. Other than D.A. Carson, if you can only have one other resource on the Gospel of John, those two volumes by Craig Keener, what a great choice that would be. Also, he has a four-volume set on the book of Acts. I've read, I think I read the introduction to the four volumes, and I think the introduction itself is like 250 pages. But there isn't hardly anything about the book of Acts that Craig Keener hasn't thought about. It's a very expensive commentary, though. I think if you buy all four books on Logos Bible software, I think it's over 200 bucks. I don't know. If I would make that my first choice, there are some excellent one-volume commentaries on Acts I would consider, like Bach, Schnabel, and Witherington, those three. But if you have the coin, if you have the bank, if you have the money, oh, I, it's worth it to get the four volumes by Keener on the book of Acts. He has a condensed slender volume on Acts in the Cambridge New Testament commentary series, which is not available on Logos. I think Cambridge and Oxford, they don't like to put their stuff on Kindle or Logos if they can help it. It's too bad because I find Bible software to be so convenient. I love being able to take my entire library wherever I go on my phone or on my tablet. For me, it's just phenomenal. But I guess they're concerned about piracy and stealing, and so they don't do it. But I love the books on Acts. And then I have a couple of books by Keener that I haven't had a chance to really do too much with yet. His commentary on Galatians is supposed to be phenomenal, but I haven't used it much yet. First Peter, I haven't used that one at all, but I do have it. His commentary on the Gospel of Matthew 
is very good. I think it does focus almost a little too much on the history and the background. I would like a little bit more theology in there, but otherwise it's helpful. Is two volumes set on miracles. It's right here. That is a phenomenal set. The first volume is basically a going through the miracles of Jesus in the Gospels. The second volume is discussing miracles that have happened in the last 100 years around the world. And it is so interesting. And I, I highly recommend that. I think, again, there's a one volume condensation of that two volume work. You can get a book about miracles by Keener in a smaller volume. And, and that might be a good choice. I haven't had a chance to check that out. I forgot to mention that Keener actually has two commentaries on Matthew. The one that I wish he'd have done more exposition on, the big one. And then there's the one in the Inner Varsity Press New Testament commentary, that blue one in the right corner. That one I actually use more than the bigger one. I, I think it gets right to the point. I really like it. So Craig Keener, one of, the, one of my favorite New Testament scholars. And another New Testament scholar I like, and I don't know if you've heard of him, his name is James Edwards. He wrote the Gospel of Mark for the Pillar New Testament Commentary series. It's phenomenal. I'm preaching through the Gospel of Mark, and I would say that other than Mark Strauss in the Zondervan exegetical set, I think James Edwards is my favorite commentator on the gospel of mark he as far as his reliability he's a little more of a reform scholar i have his commentary on romans i had to use i was in douglas moo's romans class and in addition to his own commentary on romans douglas moo also had us read james edwards and i thought edwards was phenomenal if you don't want to read a big thick tome just to find one little point, I would get the smaller one by James Edwards on Romans. I, I think it's fantastic. I really enjoyed it in seminary. I use it, I preached through Romans and I used it when I preached through Romans. And I love his commentary on Mark. I'm using that right now. Now, I don't know that Edwards has written a whole lot. Let's see if I have anything else by him. Oh, he wrote a history book from Christ to Christianity. That's supposed to be really good, but I haven't read it yet. I can't speak about it. Let's see, but this is what I have as far as James Edwards' books. So he hasn't written as much as the others, but what I've read I really liked, and so I put him in there with one of my favorite biblical scholars. Let's see, I think I got one more. No, I got two more. Mark Strauss. Mark Strauss, I didn't really know about him. I think he teaches at Bethel Seminary, California, in San Diego. And I read his book called, G I think it's called Jesus Behaving Badly. And it's got a picture of a knocked over table on the front cover. I didn't like the title. I didn't like the implication that Jesus behaved badly. So I'm not happy with the title of the book. But if you get past the cover, that you say don't judge a book by its cover. The book itself is phenomenal. It goes through some of the difficult passages in the New Testament where Jesus seems to be rude, like with the Syrophoenician woman in Mark chapter 7, or when he... Or, or when he knocks over the tables in the temple. It goes through all the controversial gospel passages. And he does a fabulous job interpreting those passages. I have that in Kindle. I don't have that in Logos. But these are some of the resources that have Mark Strauss's name on it. But that's how I first found out about him. Jesus Behaving Badly by Mark Strauss. You know, you can always put a brown paper bag over the cover and read the book. The book is phenomenal. He immediately became one of my favorite Bible interpreters after reading that one book. And it's only a couple hundred pages. So then I read a bigger book by him, Four Portraits, One Jesus, the second edition, right here. 
I think it's over 600 pages. But that book is phenomenal. That book goes through the Gospels and ta- and it goes through passages where Jesus is teaching, Jesus doing miracles, and it also goes into some of the liberal views about Jesus today and it refutes those. And it's a one-stop shopping for Jesus and the Gospels. Before this, my favorite book on Jesus and the Gospels was Jesus and the Gospels by Craig Blomberg. And a new edition of that just came out as well. I think the third or the fourth edition. That was my favorite, but not anymore. Now it's Four Portraits, One Jesus by Mark Strauss. Phenomenal book. So I highly recommend that resource. And I also highly recommend Jesus Behaving Badly, even though, as I said, I don't like the title. Let's see, I got one more scholar, and, you know, there aren't, there aren't a whole lot of Old Testament scholars that I go ya ya over. I mean, it seems like I like John Golden Gay, but he, he tends to be very more liberal than your average evangelical. I think, in fact, he's evangelical only by the most generous of extensions. But Golden Gay is a great scholar, And if you go into the ICC commentary series and pick up his commentary in Isaiah 40 through chapter 55, I think he does a terrific job interpreting. I don't know if I agree with him all the time. Like I said, he's he's more liberal than I am. But he's such a careful scholar that I, I I profit from him even though I don't agree with him. But I can't list him as one of my favorites because he is more liberal. All right. I would say Daniel Block for the Old Testament. He is a great scholar. People say his two volumes on Ezekiel in the New International Critical New Testament series, they're the two best commentaries by any Old Testament scholar on any book. I mean, that's how great they are. I've used them, and I haven't read them cover to cover, but I would agree that they are really, really good. So if you get anything by Daniel Block, you'll want to get those two volumes on Ezekiel. Let me bring them up here on Logos. They're the two blue ones there at the top. Also by Daniel Block, I read his book, The Gospel According to Moses, where It talks about the book of Deuteronomy and how Moses was responsible for the speeches, but that maybe Joshua after him, you know, may have finished things up. But really, that was a very good book too. Also, he's got a commentary right here in the blue on Judges and Ruth. That's one of the best commentaries on Judges and Ruth that you can get. So I like that. I like the gospel according to Moses, and I like the two volumes on Ezekiel. And there are other great biblical scholars. I've read a lot of Douglas Moo. I think I've read his commentary on Romans cover to cover. Um, I think I read the second edition. That was a great commentary. I've used Douglas Moo. I think I read the whole commentary on James from the Pillar New Testament series. The one in Tyndale on James is very good indeed also. so And his commentary on Galatians, I have not used it enough to be able to speak on it convincingly. So there's a lot of good biblical scholars out there. I hope this has been a fun video, a helpful video. Maybe next time we'll talk about some of my favorite theologians. I like N.T. Wright. I think I've read a lot of his books. I read Interpreting Jesus. I read Interpreting the Bible. And yeah, he's not quite as conservative as I wish he would be, but he's a wonderful writer. And I also read his biography of the Apostle Paul. That is worth getting. I don't know if I agree with him that Paul wrote the book of Romans from Ephesus. I, I am just not on board with that. And there's a few other things, but but the book itself was terrific. Really, one of my favorite biographies on Paul. Probably my favorite biography on the Apostle Paul is F.F. F. Bruce's Paul, Apostle of the Heart Set Free. 
I mean, and that book too is probably 35, 40 years old. F.F. Bruce died in 1990. But that book is so interesting. It's almost like being involved in a mystery. And as F.F. F. Bruce talks about so many different things. Ben Witherington had a good book on Paul. It's very hard to find these days. I think it's called Paul's Narrative Thought World. That was a really good look at Paul's theology. I also liked his book, The Paul Quest. That was more of a biography on the Apostle Paul by Ben Witherington. That was pretty good. Stanley Porter has a book, a biography on the Apostle Paul. I would say it's good, it's solid, it's not great. I think N.T. Wright's book and F.F. F. Bruce's books are better, but Stanley Porter's book still is very good on the Apostle Paul. And then years ago, I read a liberal scholar on the Apostle Paul. I think he's no longer with us. I think it's called The Triumph of Paul's Theology or something like that. Eh, that was okay. So I hope this has been a very helpful video, a helpful discussion. We'll be back. You guys have a great day and God bless. And by the way, in the comments, put down some of your favorite scholars. Maybe there's some people I haven't read that I need to be exposed to. You guys take care.